Hi, so recently I did a lot of videos on tempo and time stretching related functions in Cubase and out comes Cubase 12 and changes it all. Well, let's have a look, let's go. So like I said in the intro, I have a number of videos on tempo and time stretching related functions in Cubase. And I put all those videos in the playlist for you so you can have a look and I'll link that playlist in the description. Now Cubase 12 doesn't really change at all, like I said in the intro, but it does have some very nice and useful additions to this functionality. So you can see this video as a sort of addendum to the other videos that I already made, providing you basically with an even easier way to perform these functions. And I'm specifically talking about my videos on using audio warp to tighten up a bass track, aligning vocals and putting drums on the grid. And all of these are related to the audio warp enhancements in Cubase 12. So let's start by having a look at the changes in Cubase 12 that you can use to tighten up a bass track or any audio track for that matter. So over here I'm back in the project that I used for my video on bass track tightening. And again, if you want to see the details of that, I will link the video in the description. But basically if I zoom out a bit and play this bass track together with the drums, you may notice that it's not quite tight. If I zoom in a bit, you can see, for example, that over here, the kick drum on this beat hits pretty much on the beat, but the bass is a little bit early. Now, in the previous video, I showed you the first way to correct this is by using the sample editor, but you can now actually do this in Cubase 12 in the project window by using the time warp tool and then setting it to free warp. And this allows you to put warp markers in the audio and stretch and move parts of the audio. Let me first create another track version though. Now you could, for example, put a warp marker here and, and everything to the left. Yes, new version, everything to the left you want to stay in place. You can put a warp marker over here and say that everything to the right stays in place. And then you can put a warp marker over here to just move the beginning of this beat to exactly align with the kick hit over here. So there's no more need to do this in the sample editor. You can do it right in the project window which is actually more convenient because you can quickly see the related tracks, for example, this drum track below it and make sure that everything is in sync. Now, obviously it's quite a lot of work to move all the individual notes of the bass track to be on the beat. So in that other video, I also showed you a way to use audio quantizing. So let's show that again. Let's delete this version and create another copy. So I'll select the event. Audio warp quantizing has been enabled, quantized to 16 notes. And as you can see from the blue lines in this event, those are the hit points. I've already made sure that they are at the start of every bass note. And again, I explain how to do that in the other video on audio warp. Now, if you now quantize this bass part by pushing Q, you can see that all the bass notes are now aligned with the grid. However, you may also see that some of them are still a bit deviating like the one over here, for example, it seems to start a bit early, probably because the hit point was not in the right place and this one as well. So if you want to correct that, you can again go to audio warp, free warp mode. You see that the warp marker has been added here and put exactly on this 16th note of the measure, but maybe you want to add the warp marker over here. Instead, delete this one by pushing Alt select. And now you can move this warp marker exactly to the beat. And since Cubase 12, you can just fully stay in the project window for this, which is sometimes more convenient because you can see the other tracks more easily. So let's have a quick listen to the result. And by the way, next to the warp markers, you can also see how much stretching has been done of the previous part. Now next up is using the same nice Cubase techniques on vocal alignment. But before I do that, if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe to the channel, like the video so that it spreads to more people and push the little bell icon so you know when I publish another video. Now onto vocal alignment. Now over here you can see the same project that I used to demonstrate the vocal alignment in my vocal alignment video. We basically have a lead vocal and a low vocal, which we try to get in sync as much as possible uh, during recording. But obviously it's quite hard to sing a vocal exactly in sync, so you usually have to do a bit of correcting. Let's have a quick listen to how this sounds before correcting. I've seen the key, can you find the lock? With two hands I'm turning, 
I've been struck and I am holding on with all I got. Yeah, especially that last got is quite clearly not in sync. Now I already demonstrated in the other video that we can use the audio alignment panel for this. And then I will add the lead vocal as a reference. And I will add the low vocal as the target. So the audio that I want to align. And I push align audio. And then I close the alignment panel. So if I now select the low vocal and turn on free warp again, you can see that Cubase has added a lot of warp markers to align the audio. Let's have a quick listen to the beginning. I've seen the key. Can you find the lock? With two hands I'm turning. I've been struck and I am holding on. With all I got. Now if you listen a bit further, I remember there's one part where the automatic alignment doesn't quite work. I will stand up. I'll give in my best. I'll so I'll my best I'll change. So this aisle over here and this aisle over here don't quite match up. And previously I showed you how to correct this in the sample editor, but right now this can be done right in the project window where you have these tracks nicely below each other. Let's zoom in a bit more on the waveform. So what I basically want to do, I want to move this aisle to where the other aisle starts as well. And I probably want to make this a bit shorter over here. Let's have another listen. I'll give in my best, I'll change my own. Yeah, you notice the aisle is perfectly aligned now. So same thing, we used to do this in the sample editor. Now it can be done right in the project window, which is much more convenient. And if you want to know all the ins and outs, focal alignment and the audio alignment panel, please check out the original video, which I'll link in the description. But there is another change related to warp markers in the project window, which is quite convenient as well. Let's have another look. So the low vox track has now been stretched. So let's actually bounce this so we can get a bit of the warp markers in there. Replace the events, yes. And imagine now that we wanted to move. With all I got. Maybe we want to delay the got a bit. And that's again something that we can do in the project window because we can now select both events, turn on time warp again in free warp. And because we have selected both tracks now, we can put in warp markers on both tracks at the same time. For example, at the beginning of this cut and maybe a bit further down and also mark the region that we definitely do not want to move or stretch. And we can move this on both tracks at the same time. And let's make sure it doesn't get compressed too much like this. So let's have a listen. With all I got. So let's move on to putting drums on the grid now. And this is the same project as I used in my video on how to put drums on the grid. And if you want to know all ins and outs of how to put drums on the grid, I suggest you have a look at that other video that I will link in the description. Because right now I will just get on with it and will show you just the changes in Cubase 12 for this. So this is a multi-track drum recording. Let's have a quick listen. So how about if I want to tighten this up? Everything is in a group and group editing has been enabled. So whatever I do to any of these tracks, it will also be done to the other ones. So if I now select one track, all of them will be selected and I can use the quantize panel to quantize these tracks. I've already set the slice rules to use the kick as the main reference and after that the snare top, which you can also see with these red lines in the project view over here. But this time around, I don't want to use slicing to put these drums on the grid, but I can use audio warp instead due to some changes in Cubase 12, which I'll get onto later. So I turn on audio warp. My quantize settings are I want to quantize to 16th notes and then I push quantize 
And you may have noticed that audio in these multitracks have changed now. Now in my previous video, I mentioned that I would never use audio warp for quantizing multitrack drum recordings because the phase relationship between all of these multitracks was not retained. However, that has changed in Cubase 12 with this little button over here, phase coherent audio warp. So if I now push this button, basically all your audio warping that's happening in here will be phase coherent. So audio warp has now become possible for multi-track drum recordings without giving phase issues. Now again, if I turn on time warp here, you can see all the warp markers that Cubase has added and it has stretched everything by a bit, 0.99, 103, etc., etc. And all of this has now been done by maintaining the phase relationships, which is great because using the slice method when quantizing these drums was always much more of a hassle than using audio warp. So it's very nice that audio warp now works without phase issues. Now let's undo this. So we're now back to the unquantized drums. And I want to demonstrate another feature which is new in Cubase 12. And I can do that by disabling group editing for a sec. Because let's assume that you have a number of tracks which you do not have in a group. Let's assume for example, that you wanted to correct this snare hit being exactly on the fourth beat. But let's also assume that you're doing this just on this one track initially. It's not something that you would do in practice, but it's more to demonstrate a certain Cubase function that was added. So again, I turn on free warp. And I can now put in a warp marker over here. And before and after the part that I don't want to move. And then I can move this exactly to the start of the beat. Now, obviously, all the other tracks are no longer in sync now. But I can correct that because it's now also possible in Cubase to go audio, advanced, copy warp markers from selected event. And then you can select all of the other events now. And you can say audio, advanced, paste warp markers to selected event. And notice how the audio on those other tracks will move to be in sync with the corrected track again. Now again, this is not something that I would actually use for drums in this way, because this is a multi-track recording and we now don't have group editing and phase coherent audio warp enabled. So that means there might now be phase issues in this drum recording, but it is a function in Cubase that you can, for example, use for vocal stacks if you wanted to move them all in the same way as you did on one of them, or maybe even for recordings of different instruments that you want to keep in sync. So yeah, again, a nice new addition in Cubase 12. Now, as you've seen in this video, Cubase provides quite a lot of functionality related to tempo and time stretching. And I think it's very important to have a good basic grasp of all of that so that you know the proper technique to use whenever you want to do something in Cubase. Now, for that exact reason, I have assembled a playlist on YouTube for all my tempo and time stretching related videos. And you can check out that playlist over here. Have a look at that, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.